At Horses for Healing, a lot of the times horses help with mental and emotional disabilities. Desde aquí hasta la pared, todos los asientos en esta sala serán llenados con estudiantes hispanos. The law now sees Twitter as a legitimate publishing platform. When conditions are like these outside, I just got off the phone with a sergeant down at the Fayetteville Police Department who told me that there haven't been any incidents tonight. Hundreds of people and U of A students have gathered here behind me to participate in the annual Holy Celebration. Here you can see Nathan training behind me with his coach. I'm over here at Lake Fayetteville where I just participated in the Freedom Movement 5K. We may soon see the need for dietitians to get degrees in psychology and counseling rather than just in food sciences. Coming up on UATV, I'll tell you about one U of A student who's making a big splash. I'll tell you why one Fayetteville family is right here in Peru. Thanks guys, I'm over here at Wilson Park where hundreds of people and U of A students have gathered here behind me to participate in the annual Holy Celebration. This celebration has been going on in India for centuries and it represents spring renewal, the coming together of all different kinds of people in India, friendship and love. Now the first day of the celebration they create a huge bonfire which symbolizes the burning away of all evils and then they burn their old clothes. And then the second day, they come together and everything is fair game. Everyone on the streets throws colors at each other. The Friends of India and the Hindu Student Association here on campus put this event together every year. And they say that this event is about more than just throwing colored powder. India is split into different states, a bunch of different languages, religions, dialects. And so after Holi, everyone looks the same, everyone has color all over their face. So it represents that everyone's equal and everyone's unified. Well, just people coming together, doesn't matter who you are, you just, you grab a packet of color and just throw it at anyone. You know, it can be your friend, it can be a stranger, it doesn't matter who you are, rich or poor, if you're Indian or not, it doesn't matter, everyone just comes together. I talked to people from all over the state of Arkansas and even people from outside of the state who have traveled here to participate in the Holy Celebration today. They are so glad to be able to bring this global tradition close home to here in Fayetteville. Reporting for UATV, I'm Tara Bradham. That's right, Jacob. I just got off the phone with a sergeant down at the Fayetteville Police Department who told me that there haven't been any incidents tonight. Most of the main roads are passable but still dangerous in some spots, and most of the side roads are still covered in ice. Now take a look. This is the storm that started it all on Sunday. While conditions aren't very good out here, we still have to get around, so here are a few tips to stay safe on the roads. First, allow three times as much space as you normally would in order to stop. With slippery roads, your car could slide farther than you think when you hit the brakes. And when you do hit the brakes, make sure you do it gently to avoid skidding. If your brakes lock up, make sure you gently back off of them. Lastly, be careful on bridges, overpasses, and back roads, which still haven't melted yet. Even if temperatures are above freezing, if conditions are wet, you may still hit some icy spots in the bridges or in shady areas. As you can see from the footage I shot earlier, many roads still weren't melted this afternoon. Now, of course, it's always safer to stay inside whenever possible, but if you do need to get out and about, make sure you stick to main roads and drive slowly. Reporting live for UATV, I'm Tara Bradham. Jacob? Thanks, Jacob. Courtney Love has just been cleared by a jury in the first ever Twible case or libel in the form of a tweet. Now this case is very important because it means the law now sees Twitter as a legitimate publishing platform that has serious implications for the future of online communication. In 2010, after the rock star's attorney refused to take action against the managers of her husband's estate, Love tweeted her attorney was bought off. Attorney Rhonda Holmes sued Love for libel, saying the tweet was purposely published to harm her reputation. Love's Twitter during and after the case boasted of her right to freedom of speech. But one media law expert says the only reason Love won was because the case was in California. You have to take responsibility for it. She was really lucky uh, that the plaintiff who sued her had to prove actual malice and couldn't prove that she knew that was a lie. This means the rest of us aren't safe. Everything we publish on social media is now fair game for a lawsuit. Now most of us know that everything we publish on the internet is never truly gone for good. But now it's actually going into history. The Library of Congress is now archiving every tweet ever published for future data analysis of our culture. So before you hit the tweet button, make sure you're ready to go into the history books. 
Reporting live for UATV, I'm Tara Bradham. Back to you, Jacob. And whenever I don't get to come out here, it makes me really sad. Hannah Lindner is a different person when she's around horses. Hannah has a mood disorder and we do regular therapy every other week. She sees a psychologist, but it doesn't help like horses helps. April, Hannah's mom, can't imagine their life without the program. She sees the effects of Hannah's relationship with horses changing the way she interacts with people every day. Without the scholarships the program offers, it's a treatment Hannah's family might not otherwise have been able to afford. I have four kids that are into all kinds of stuff and, and Hannah's um, disorder, I mean it's not cheap. <laughs> She's been hospitalized. Hannah's instructor Karen Davis loves seeing Hannah's relationship grow with the horses. She's been able to own some responsibility for her actions, which is huge for Hannah. Not your left, don't pull on your left. It's left leg, the people left out leg. here, she feels accepted. Girl. There's no one to judge her out here. Um, the horses don't care what she looks like. The horses don't care if she's angry or upset. They just accept her for who she is. And I don't think she's really found that anywhere else. At Horses for Healing, a lot of the times horses help with mental and emotional disabilities. But horses are actually incredible for physical disabilities as well. Therapeutic riding helps children recover from leg or hip injuries as well as disorders like cerebral palsy. Children with Down syndrome, autism, and many other disabilities ride at Horses for Healing. After volunteering with these children, Hannah has a new dream. I really want to become a therapeutic riding instructor. It um, really combines my two passions, is horses and helping um, special education kids. Hannah plans to go to college to pursue her dream. She can't wait to help children experience the same joy she has found through the program. Reporting for UATV, I'm Tara Bradham. When snow falls over the weekend, college students run outside to play. Driveways are cleared, snowballs are thrown, and snow angels are made. The break in the normal routine is a nice change of pace, but while students are outside playing, their school books are inside, untouched. When conditions are like these outside, many students make the dangerous assumption that the university will cancel classes. But what if that doesn't happen? There's no way I'd be prepared for my classes tomorrow if they actually happened. If school does not cancel tomorrow, like, I am going to be screwed because I have not studied at all this whole weekend. I've got three exams in this week. Got two tomorrow, and I just hope it keeps on snowing like it does. In the morning, students were greeted by sunny skies. The university decided on a delayed start, so students who were hoping for a snow day were forced to trudge to school, ready or not. Reporting for UATV, I'm Tara Bradham. Coming from an orphanage in Russia, I just remember that situation of I could be still over there in an orphanage. Nathan Witten may only have five fingers, but he has one big heart. To be a 21-year-old college student, to be able to say, hey, you have a chance to make it to the Paralympics. It's something that not a lot of people get. Nathan started swimming 18 months ago after classmates noticed his competitive nature. He decided swimming is his best chance at the Paralympics. Now Nathan fits nine training sessions a week between his duties as a college student and the manager of the U of A swim team. Swimming is it's not something that you can just do whenever you want. You have to be committed and you have to stay dedicated to it. Here you can see Nathan training behind me with his coach in the Jones Center here in Rogers. But the rest of the time... Nathan trains right here on campus in the Hyper. Kim Pike sees drastic improvement in Nathan's technique every time she works with him. Everything I talk to him about, he always does it 100%. So, I mean, he's got unbelievable work ethic. He's very driven. Nathan is only four seconds away from being recognized on the national scene. He's traveling to Miami over spring break to qualify for the Pan Pacific Championships. I'm sticking with it, you know, I'm not letting anything get in my way. you got to have self-belief. Reporting for UATV. I'm Tara Bradham.